Hey YouTube, what is up and welcome back to tutorial number 10. It's Quinton here and in this tutorial I just want to talk to you guys quickly about the W3C. So some of you guys are probably sitting there right now like W3C? What the heck? What, what are you on about? Well, let me explain. The W3C stands for World Wide Web, Con World Wide Web Consortium. That is a tongue twister. And uh, these guys are basically in charge of like setting all the rules that we as web designers or web developers have to follow. Uh, so you can't just go in like and deploy a whatever works attitude and just type in whatever HTML you can think of and test it in a web page. You actually have to follow some rules. Uh, but fortunately I have been teaching you guys most of those rules already. So... Uh, Obviously, let me just open up my browser real quick and you can view this web page. Uh, obviously, these are the rules that you guys have to follow. So you guys always need to make sure that you have a doc type definition, which is obviously this doc type up here. And the next thing you have to do is have an MIME or multi-purpose internet mail extension. Now, the, it's got a funny name because they used to use it for mail, but they use it for websites now too. And uh, what you actually have to do to have one of these is type in a meta tag and then type HTTP equiv equals content type and then content equals and then text slash HTML semicolon char set equals UTF 8. Now, what a lot of guys do is they actually just type in uh, meta char set UTF 8, and that actually seems to work uh, when you validate your code. But the book that I'm reading told me to do it this long really long way and uh, basically what this does is it just specifies the character set that you need to use uh, for your web page and the standard character set is char set UTF-8 um, so we're not going to worry too much about what the different char sets are if you guys want to learn about that uh, google it or something but uh, this is the standard and that's what we're going to be using and uh, yeah okay awesome now the next thing you guys need to do is obviously make sure that all your tags are nested properly and they don't overlap so in other words you know don't have a list item ending outside of your outside of your ul or your unordered list obviously just make sure that it's always nested properly and the, all the list items are inside of your unordered list uh, which is all inside your body, etc. So uh, that's quite easy, and we've been doing that. Uh, make sure that you use all lowercase for your element names. So, in other words, all of this must be lowercase, which it is. I haven't been using any capitals or uppercase. Always use closing tags. Okay, well, I guess I can read them from here always use your closing tag so never type in like li and then miss the ending li like that i mean if you if you save this it probably still works uh, as you can see it still works but it's just uh, not according to standard so make sure that you always use a closing tag uh, okay i'm just gonna push ctrl z <laughs> cool so uh yeah, we've actually been completing all of that or doing all of that. And then uh, the last or actually second last thing is to make sure that all empty tags are marked with a closing slash. So if you ever have uh, an empty tag like a break or something like that, you need to have a forward slash closing that, that tag. Or if you just have an empty list tag or something, make sure to always close it. And uh, the last thing is that every attribute must be in quotation marks. So as you can see here, we've got an image at the bottom of our web page. 
and it the attribute is in quotation marks. Now you can see if you take the quotation marks away it still works but it's just better to have quotation marks there because that's what the standard is. So uh, guys always make sure that your attributes are always in quotation marks and then the last thing is if you can see my image here at the bottom I actually had to add in another attribute that I didn't teach you guys about and that is the alt attribute which just gives the browser some information in case the browser cannot find this image it'll display this text that you wrote in the alt attribute here so in case you can't the browser can't find this image which should never be the case it should always get this image unless your connection is extremely slow um, so now that we've actually gone ahead and we've written this website um, I'm gonna teach you guys or show you guys how to validate it so you, here's our web page right here and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to go over to my uh, the W3C validator which I'll uh, place the link in the description below and you're just gonna click browse choose the web page which is this one and then click on validate or check and you should see we don't really get any errors we just get one warning and that is just because we are using HTML5 and uh, it's a, still a new checker so they don't know like if if there's any bugs or not you need to report them so uh, there's actually nothing wrong with our website the way it is um, so that was actually just a quick tutorial on uh, W3C validation I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time I would appreciate it a lot if you guys really hit that subscribe button and also don't be afraid to comment like or share my videos it's really gonna help my channel grow so thanks very much and I'll see you guys next time